So, first things first, James, how are you? I'm very well, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Nice. And, well, we've spoken before, mm -hmm. uh, so I won't go into detail about certain things, but there's one, one obvious thing we didn't talk about last time, which is James Taylor. Yes. What did you think of his music early on? Well, it was one of the first artists that I listened to as a okay. kid because my dad always played him and, and sung his songs. I remember when I started to play guitar, um, my dad always said, don't go near the James Taylor books because it, it was very kind of, um, it's very hard to play them and he, uh, he couldn't really play them. So I always was very afraid to play and cover his, his songs. But since I have, I've gone there and I've, uh, and, and I've started learning them, which, and he's a wonderful player and singer. And, and was it that era of songwriters that you first fell in love with music? I, I think so. I mean, from different, from different times, I think okay. it was definitely the acoustic singer-songwriter that I first fell in love with, which was you know, James Taylor or Damien Rice or Ed Sheeran or Rayla Montaigne, those type of guys that I would listen to non-stop. Okay. And this might be a bit difficult to answer, but and especially when you're younger, it's not the music that a lot of peers listen to. So what right. attracted you to that kind of music? I think it was really just, it was my family. It was my dad and my mom playing, playing it in the kitchen, in the car on the way to school. Mm. And, and it kind of taught me how much that your parents can have an influence on the stuff that you listen to. Mm -hmm. um, because, because now I, I still love all that music and I probably never would have found it if it wasn't for then. Right. And your father played in a, in a band. Did your mother play music? No, my mum will quite happily sing after a few glasses of wine. Exactly. Um, but, but she didn't really ever learn any I instruments or do it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really just on my dad's side. Okay. And for you, it kind of developed quite quickly because uh, I believe you started around age 10 and then at age 12 you were picking up guitar and mm -hmm. piano and stuff. What did you get out of kind of creating music yourself? Uh, yourself, is it kind of creating and putting thoughts to paper? And hmm. I, I think what hooked me on, on writing my own songs was definitely um, the th kind of therapeutic mm -hmm. feeling that it gave me. How when I felt a certain way, if I was angry or if I was happy or, or sad, um, if I wrote a song about it, then it would make me feel better afterwards. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's probably the most powerful feeling that it that it gives me. Do you remember the first song that gave you this feeling when you, when you wrote it? I think when I, when I started writing songs, I, this is something I learned over time, was I was trying to write what I thought people wanted to hear. Right. When there's, there's a difference between doing that and then being honest in a song. And actually being honest, it definitely connects with people more than trying to write something that you think they want to hear. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I tried to be really cool and badass, <laughs> but I really wasn't because um, I was 12 years old talking about drinking and, and going out and whatever. Um, so it was just about crushes and that, and that kind of thing, living this fake life, really. And at that age, because, well, again, you were very young, and in 2000, and I have to get this right, I think, no, when you were 12, you started your YouTube channel. Yes, well. I don't know what year that is either, to be honest. It was a while ago. <laughs> yes, I did start. Do, do you remember what motivated you? Because obviously we, uh, we live in, a, in an age of uh, digital technology right. and social media, but what, what was the ambition behind it or the, the um, motivation? That's, that's a good question. I, I think being encouraged by my dad. My dad okay. wanted me to be artistic. He wanted me to, to be able to express myself and do what, what made me kind of happy. And I started learning songs and, and he watched me learn them and said, why don't why don't we put videos online and, and people can tell you what they think of them. And uh, I, I remember being a bit nervous in the beginning because I think the scariest thing when you do that is, is your friends. It's not the strangers that watch it, it's the people you know who you don't really want to see them. Um, but once you get over that, once I got over that, I, I started putting out lo lots more videos. But I suppose, did your friends know you were playing music at that time? They knew it was kind of a hobby of mine. Right. I, think, I think they, they would kind of tease me a little bit in school. Um, but then as things kind of progressed and, and I started to kind of achieve more things in it, um, they, they kind of, they respected me a lot more for it than they did in the beginning. And obviously things have worked out, so... Yeah, things are, yeah, things are going good, <laughs> things are nice. And so, so I want to talk about, uh, quickly about the, uh, the album you, you've been working on, because mm -hmm. you've released X, uh, the song X not too yep. long ago. So is that kind of a precursor to... to Definitely, um, there's new music on the way and... Um, Hopefully it's going to be sooner than people actually imagine. Um, but the album, the album 
it's still kind of in the in the in the distant future. Okay. I, I'd hope for this year, but I will be releasing new music okay. at least um, quite soon. So, what can you reveal about what what you've written then lately? Um, there's songs that people uh, who have come to shows, who have come to the, my headline shows, probably will have heard, but they just have never been able to have a studio version of it. Okay. Um, so, but that's that's been that for me is quite nice. Is going. To, to play my own show, it means I can test different songs sure. and see how people react to them. That's really the, the only way I can know if it's a good song or not. So from doing that, I've picked the ones that I think react well and have recorded them. What have you found, and obviously you've been on tour with Shawn Mendes, so you get to see uh, those shows as well. Right. But what have you found works? Well, what have you found attracts people to certain songs? Or? Hmm. Well, obviously, I mean, if we're just talking about the basics of songwriting, uh, it kind of has to, there has to be a catchy, something catchy about it. And if not that, it has to have a certain meaning behind the song. I find that I've had more kind of, I think, success in, the, in, that, in that point of view where, where, where my songs have strong meanings and messages mm -hmm. rather than necessarily being catchier than, than others. So that, that's kind of what I've been going for. And now as a songwriter, I'm trying to, to merge the two so I can find a nice middle ground. Mm -hmm. And finally then, because, well, I think you've mentioned this before, but that you're very much a lyrics guy, so... Mm -hmm. is, it, is it difficult to come up with lyrics that, that you feel strongly about to, to kind of do, and that you're proud of? Is that a, a difficult process? Yes, that? I think uh, it's harder when you're writing songs with other people mm -hmm. because other people, um, they don't know how you feel. They, they try their, their best to, to, to get inside your head and, and say it for you. But, but when I'm writing by myself, um, it's usually the easiest, the easiest way because I don't have to, um, right. you know, argue or, or agree with certain people. It's just all about, it's all me. Okay, James, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank Cheers. you. Awesome. Yes. Thanks, man.